Hello everyone and welcome to the second game of the match Magnus Carlsen vs Vasily Ivanchuk or Ivanchuk vs Carlsen as Ivanchuk has the white pieces here from the FIDE World Cup. Um, uh, Magnus won the first game and now uh, Ivanchuk needs to win the game in order to bounce back and force tiebreak. So let's see what happened here. Uh, what did he choose as his opening choice and uh, was he able to put any pressure on Magnus Carlsen? Uh, let's dive straight into it. So e4 by, uh, uh, by, by Chucky, we have pawn to e5. Knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. Uh, the Rue Lopez def uh, is on the board. We have pawn to a6, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, and now knight to f6. We have castles and bishop to e7. So very, very standard stuff here. Uh, rook to e1, we have pawn to b5, bishop to b3, castles, and pawn to a4. Now again, uh, all been seen before, the anti-martial not, um, not uh, going for anything crazy. Uh, we have rook to b8. This is a, a well, not as a, a played move as, for example, bishop to b7, which is the main move here. Also, you can play b4, also d4, d5 it has been played. Uh, rook to b8 is a solid move, but uh, somewhat rare. We have a captures, a captures, and now pawn to c3. Preparing pawn to d4. Magnus plays d6, and now pawn to d4. E captures, c captures, and now the immediate pawn to d5. Also, uh, here are some other ideas have been uh, tried now knight to b4 preparing c5 also just developing the bishop to g4 is a very nice uh, but d5 by magnus and now pawn to e5 so why did, why did magnus allow this expansion in the center well knight to e4 it's just a beautiful piece here and if um uh, Vassal develops with knight to c3, Magnus will just trade. Remember, Magnus only needs a draw in this game to win the match. So knight to c3, knight captures b captures, and now bishop to f5. Magnus solves the problem of developing his light square bishop. And uh, there is a game where rook to a6 was played, and it does make sense to play such a move going after the knight, as the knight is undefended on c6. Instead, we have pawn to h3 by Vassal, and it is now as of move 16 that we have a completely new game. Okay, Magnus uh, continues development, queen to d7, now the knight is also protected, so maybe rook to e6 isn't all that impressive. Uh, bishop to e3, just continuing development, and now, well, Magnus could go for something like rook to a8, trying to trade off a pair of rooks, he goes for knight to d8. Uh, this prepares c5, and also prepares to bring the knight over to e6. Uh, so okay, knight to d2, uh, and here we have pawn to b4, the immediate pawn to b4 by Magnus. Now, uh, c5... Uh, uh, also makes sense. It's very hard to uh, to understand why Magnus would go for b4 first before playing c5 because you know that c5 is a move you have to play and it's sort of a, a forced line. D captures knight to e6 of course um, and now you want to remaneuver the knight also you want to recapture on c5. So c6 queen captures queen to f3 now putting pressure on the d5 pawn uh, but just bishop to e4. So uh, it's not really uh, not really an issue. Knight captures on e4. D captures queen Queen to g4 and now knight to c5 and now you are you have some ideas of bringing the knight to d3 also the bishop here is hanging so bishop captures on c5 bishop captures and now queen captures on e4 now it's okay to grab the pawn queen captures rook captures and for example now pawn to b4 and everything gets traded off um, a very nice draw here so maybe magnus thought that this was uh maybe uh to, well it's just not much to play for, so he plays b4 right away. And, uh, of course, this invites uh, Vassal to play pawn to c4, which he does. C, c captures on b4 isn't very ambitious, especially if you want to win the game. So d captures on c4, bishop captures, and now pawn to c6. Uh, taking away the d5 square from white's pieces, and also you cannot just start advancing those pawns. Uh, queen to a4 now, uh, and here we have rook to b7. Magnus just nicely defends and also stops uh, queen to a7. Uh, but uh, one thing that um, Ivanchuk has going for him is that he's much, much better on the clock. He has an hour and 20 minutes on the clock, whereas Magnus is already down to some 40 minutes on the clock. So knight to f1, he wants to remaneuver the knight to g3. Probably if he's not going to be able to create some sort of an attack against the Black King, he will have to resort to some F4, G4, F5 ideas and then just go uh, for an all-out attack. Uh, knight to E6 and now Knight to G3 with Bishop to G6, getting the Bishop out of harm's way. So you're, you're not in time to capture the D4 pawn. And now uh, Vas just defends it with Rook E to D1. 
And okay, both players uh, played fairly quickly. Vassal down to uh, an hour and 10 minutes. Magnus still uh, some 40 minutes on the clock. Uh, knight to c7. The knight uh, coming to an even better square. The d5 square. And now queen back to b3. Uh, knight to d5. Uh, this also uh, doesn't just put the knight on a, br a brilliant square like this. But it also stops pawn to e6. As this could be somewhat of an issue here. Uh, rook to a5. And now we have rook to a7. And here where uh, when uh, Ivanchuk saw this rook to a7 move. He was very unhappy. Uh, because uh, it, it, it almost looked like he missed this move. It means that it's just going to be way too easy for Magnus to trade down material and there just will not be a uh, whole that lot to play for so rook d to a1 uh, rook f to a8 and now we have a trade rook captures rook captures rook captures and queen captures the rook uh, all of the rooks get traded off the board and now knight to e2 it would be a bit too dangerous maybe to capture on d5 captures captures and queen captures uh, as uh, okay, you've grabbed a pawn, but maybe now the b4 pawn will be a bit too dangerous. Let's say bishop to f8, and if queen goes back to b3, already queen to a3 is happening, and uh, you you have to you know make some decisions that you should not be forced to make from a position that was already you know quite quite good a few moves ago. So instead, knight to e2, and now queen to a3, offering a queen trade, but now just bishop to c1. Evanchuk invites the queen trade on b3, and Magnus accepts. It, it, it looks like queen to a1 might be something, uh, but it's really not, because after bishop captures and pawn captures, uh, of course, you're not going to capture the pawn on d5 and allow bishop to d3, which would win uh, black the piece, uh, you will instead just move the king, and now everything is fine. For example, pawn to h6 or black plays something, you will capture the pawn. Now comes, let's say, bishop to f5, and after queen back to c4, you will play bishop to e6. And okay, black's position looks very nice now. Uh, you can't even play this because queen captures and e5 comes with check, but you don't have to. You can just move the queen, uh, and all is well. Queen c7, let's say, bishop to f8, and. Um, it's a it's a fine position. White is up a piece, but black has the passed B pawn, which is extremely strong due to the bishop pair. Uh, but again, Magnus not interested in this. He doesn't want to win this game. He only needs a draw. He plays queen captures on B3, uh, bishop captures, and now bishop to D3 opting for further trades, and Vassal trades, but uh, he trades knights with knight to f4. So knight captures, bishop captures, and now pawn to c5, uh, eliminating this um, uh, beautiful center. D captures on c5, bishop captures, and now Vassal plays pawn to e6. We have captures, uh, no sorry, first uh, king to f8 was played, e captures on f7, and now Magnus goes back after the pawn, bishop to g6. We have king to f1, and now bishop captures on f7. Bishop captures on f7, king captures, king to e2, uh, and now bishop to d4. Uh, we have king to d3, attacking the bishop. And here, uh, Ivanchuk played king to d3 and offered the f2 pawn, probably with the idea of winning back the uh, the, the, the pawn by, by capturing on b4. But there's a problem. Bishop captures on f2. Bishop to d2, and now bishop to c5. Of course, Magnus defends, uh, uh, Vassal attacks with king to c4, but now bishop to f8, uh, and uh, believe it or not, it was in this position on move 43 that Vassal Ivanchuk resigned the game, as there seems to be nothing more to be done here. Well, there is a lot to play for. Uh, he, th there's no way for him to actually win the game, so I think his spirits were just, you know, completely depleted, and uh, he, he wasn't interested in continuing this match, as uh, he, he needs a win, and he's not going to win this game, regardless of whether he uh, wins back that pawn or not. Now, uh, the problem is, if you capture the pawn right away, then, of course, the position is completely winning. For Magnus, there's no question about that. For example, king to e6, king to c4, and you will shield the king with king e5, king to d3, king to f4, king to e2, king to g3, king to f1, and now the only winning move, but, of course, not one that would be difficult to spot for Magnus, king to h2. And now the problem is, after you play king f2, uh, there is just a very easy win. King f3, pawn to h5, king f2, g4, uh, not a lot to do here. Uh, you, you either capture or you allow pawn to g3. So captures, captures, and now if you go king to f1, then g3 is winning because you take away all of the squares from the white king. The white king has to move. You're going to capture the pawn, move the king and queen the pawn. And if you don't do this, uh, for example, if g3 is played instead of moving the king, uh, then a nice king h3. And after king f1, of course, now king captures on g3. And for those of you who are maybe new to chess, um, uh, of course, this is uh, now completely winning. King to f3, king to f1, g3, king g1, g2. Now you force uh, the, the white 
in the Sook Swang, the white king has to go to an unfavorable square, king of two, and now g1 will uh, c become a queen. G1 queen, you're going to move up the board, and this will uh, prepare mate in, mate in two, king h3, and queen to g3 will be checkmate. Now, the more uh, resilient way to fight after bishop to f8 is not to, to, to capture the pawn, is to actually ignore the pawn and play pawn to g4, and then you will uh, yeah, you will force uh, Magnus to find uh, very interesting ways to win this. For example, if you go king e6, then bishop to f4 uh, cuts off the king from uh, going anywhere close um, uh, to, to those pawns. And if bishop to d6, which of course you can play, because uh, if you trade pieces, of course, the uh, position is completely winning for Magnus, he is up a pawn. Uh, so so, uh, you know, it's uh, definitely a possibility. Bishop to e3 can be played, and now you you, you still try and fight. But uh, at least you, uh, you've you stopped the black from uh, advancing. Uh, another thing you could do after bishop to f4, you could play something like pawn to g6, and then if bishop to g3, bishop to e7, you slowly uh, approach king to d4, bishop to f6, check, king to c4, and now bishop to e5. Maybe this is how you advance and um, uh, try and reach those white pawns. But now bishop to h4, and if bishop to c3, now defending the pawn, you will play bishop to g3. And again, you have very nice control here over uh, the center of the board. Uh, you can even put the bishop on f4 to gain more control, and it would take Magnus quite a few moves to figure out how to uh, how to win this. But in the end, uh, probably he would uh, he would win this. Uh, so, uh, of course, Vassal was not interested in this, not because he uh, doesn't think that he could maybe put up a fight and maybe ma make Magnus work for his meal, uh, but there is no way to actually win the game, and uh, that's, uh, that means that there's just no point in him continuing here. Uh, so, yeah, after Bishop to F8, he resigned, and a very nice victory for Magnus Carlsen, who wins two classical games in a row now against Vassal Ivanchuk, thus improving his rating a little bit. Uh, let me just check real quickly uh, what's his current uh, live rating. Uh, yeah, he's up to 2840. So very nice. Uh, followed by Fabiano, 2784, 2780, and so on and so on. And for those of you who are interested in how uh, Gukesh versus Van Gaal ended, I will now uh, tell you the results. So don't, uh, you know, uh, say I spoiled it or anything. You can stop the video now. Uh, Gukesh drew the second game against Van Gaal, which means that he also goes into the next round of the FIDE World Cup, uh, into the quarterfinals, uh, and uh, well, uh, absolutely incredible by the by the young Indian player. We'll see what uh, what else he has in store for us, and all the other games are still being played while I'm recording this. So I'm probably going to make another video where I'm going to talk about all the results of uh, of this round. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Very nicely done by Magnus. Too bad for uh, for Ivanchuk who came all this way, but then okay, he had to face Magnus. He didn't have a a brilliant day. You know, he played uh, a, a very, very good chess, but a very good chess. Uh, you know, if Magnus is playing well, is not enough to take down Magnus Carlsen. Uh, so yeah, once again, really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Emil Ulamets, uh, uh, Nagarjuna Ponugoti, Philip Haxtenberg, uh, Srinivas Kashyap, and E1 Check for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup 2023 until it finishes. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.